Hello, folks. Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast. Only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I've met the Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And this is a podcast where I'm going to look at various topics through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful Grammar Technology, a mathematical interface on grammar brought to the public by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller in 1988. Wow. I'm trying to perfect my late night DJ radio voice here because I've always, ever since I was a small child, wanted to be a DJ and spin records of my choice that I thought everyone on the planet should hear should be exposed to or experienced to, and to basically sequence them in such an expert manner that it, such a flowing uh, atmosphere that I would be a famous DJ, but no one would know what I look like. (laughs) Kind of like, you know, Venus Flytrap from WKRP in Cincinnati or or, uh, Dr. Johnny Fever, Wolfman Jack. Just to name a few, anyways. A little sidetrack issue there. What am I going to talk about today? I have no idea. I went into this with no plan as to what to talk about. Just that I knew I had some now space. As I'm actually folding clothes. And thought I'd try and utilize that to talk about something. But as it turns out, I'm not really talking about anything of pertinence here. Um, I was watching a video recounting the feud between the actors Jean-Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal, and actually uh, other actors who were feuding with Steven Seagal as well. And uh, I don't know if you folks know who any of those individuals are, but it got me thinking, you know, you could almost apply that same type of scenario to the quantum grammar domain with the principal players in the quantum grammar domain, which there aren't really any now. There aren't any out there in the public anymore like there were. When I first came onto the scene in 2017, and I mean onto the scene as in I entered the domain, the community, I wasn't a public presence in 2017. But the folks who were, were Colin David Eiffel Wayne, Colin Miller, Colin Russell hyphen J, Colin Gould, uh, Colon Gordon, uh, wow, Gordon Gonch, Colon Gonch, I can't remember his middle name, apologies for that. Well, he wasn't really in it, but he was available on that uh, seminar with Russell when Russell was, what, like a teenager or something. I don't know if Russell was 16 years old or whatever. I'm joking, folks. I know he wasn't 16, but he sure did look like a, you know, a young fella who hadn't shed their baby fat yet. He looked very young. And then, uh, who else? Mark Lowercase K was beginning to make his name known in that domain. And the other guy that was in Arizona, Colon Layton hyphen Lionel Colon Ward. He had, he ran the Federal Postal Court website at that time because he was the Federal Postal Clerk for the Federal Postal Court as appointed by David and Russell. He ran that website and he had material up on the internets having to do with the domain. But those were the name, uh, main folks on the forefront at that time. And then I threw my hat into the circle in 2018 when I started my YouTube channel in February of 2018, which as you all probably know, was very shortly before Colin David Ivan Colin Miller passed away. And then after he passed away, it literally became almost like a three ring circus. There were folks vying for clout and credibility. There were folks coming out of the woodwork saying that they 
had jurisdiction over the flag, that David gave them permission to take over. I mean, Russell J. Gould, Marcus Sean Christopher, uh, Jason Paul Grievous, which actually, Grievous didn't say that Russell, or I'm sorry, that David gave anything to him or gave him permission or anything. I don't think he did. I think he claimed to uh, capture the flag. I'm, I'm not clear on that, but he, long story short, he basically claimed the same stuff that Russell claimed. And uh, they, you know, the game of disqualification started where each personality began trying to disqualify the other. There, wait, but there were other ones too. There were other ones too. There were some folks from overseas, which I can't recall their names, but they started sending out threatening emails and court marshals, and there were all sorts of folks trying to jump in on this. Some folks from Australia that claimed to have some kind of jurisdiction because uh, David was down there. Oh, yeah, and the, the people from Hawaii, Kalani Kohau, who I had personal experience with, who I can certify, verify, confirm that she has next to zero knowledge of correct sentence structure. She cannot syntax. She cannot understand correct sentence structure. She certainly can't write correct sentence structure. I know this because I have firsthand knowledge of communication with her. So all these folks were doing this. And she was claiming mustard master and tried to join forces with Mark Cashon Christopher. Oh, yeah. And then there was that Dax guy from uh, Australia. He was another one who was uh, stepping up. and But that, that came later on over the years. But what I'm saying is I went through all that long-winded mishmash of whatever to get to the point that there really is no one out there right now who's vying for anything. Like everyone's kind of settled into their own space in the domain, their own little private confidential space. And no one really bothers anyone else. Everyone, held, of course, has their, except for me, I might say, although I do have a form of it. Like, every, okay, let me finish what I'm saying, getting ahead of myself. Everyone pretty much has like a disqualification page. Like Mark Sean Christopher has a page where warns about people who are wrong or psychopaths or narcissists or sociopaths and they're and Russell has a same same thing. He even has like an arrest warrant page. My name. I'm honored to be on there. <laughs> oh my gosh. These people are almost like characters out of comic books, I'd have to say. But they all have those pages. Now for me I don't have that. I've never disqualified anyone in my life because I'm not one to say uh, whether someone should stop or correct or not. It's up to, not up to me. It's up to them to stop and correct themselves if they want to. What I do is I concentrate solely on the grammar. And that's what I do. If you look at my Coral Blade Grotto videos, the quote unquote reaction videos and the audit videos, I look at the grammar of these folks. I break it down and I show how they're not using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar as laid down by the creator of, well, okay, I cannot certify or verify that David Whit Miller was the creator of it. But what I can say is he was the publisher of it. He brought it to the public. He was a facilitator of it. So by the facilitator and publisher's rules that he laid out, none of them know the grammar. Not Russell, not um, Mark Sean Christopher, not Kalani Kohau, not none of them that I mentioned have closure on the grammar. And I can prove it, and I have proven it. Not only have I proven it in those videos, but I've also showed how to correct the mistakes that they're making. I've given closure, I've given solutions to how they can fix things. And for some of them, Russell J. Gould excluded and anyone connected to Russell J. Gould, this does not apply to you. 
but I have also offered to teach any of those folks how to learn the grammar if they want to. Actually, it doesn't apply to Mark Schoen Christopher either, wherever he is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's enjoying three hots and a cot. Who knows what he's doing? But anyhow, but any of anyone else not named Mark Sean Christopher or not named Russell J. Gould or any of his ilk are more than welcome to contact me, Jason Matt, at G17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Quite simply. So that, that's my version of what that would mean. I don't disqualify anyone. I just look at the grammar. And it's up to them if to whether they want to fix it or not. Either which way, it's not hurting me. Because that's the, the crooks of a stop and correct is, is there damage being created? How is using a fictitious conveyance of grammar hurting you? What damage has it caused? Show me on the mannequin where quantum grammar hurt you or where where plain simple English hurt you. Sort of like that. All right, I'm, I'm being cheeky. So what? All right. What the guy say? Turn the other cheek so you can just get the living snot pounded out of you. Sure, why not? Sounds like a plan. Seems like it would work. That's exactly what the fiction system wants you to do. Turn the other cheek. Give unto the Lord what is the Lord. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Shut up. Obey. Do what you're mandated. Because guess what? In the imaginary next life, you're going to be a king. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to be so happy. And all those rapists, murderers, and pedophiles that accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in prison, they're going to be sitting right next to you. And they're going to be sitting right next to their victims. So you're going to be all one big, happy Jesus family. You're welcome to that. No thank you as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather go elsewhere. I have no idea why I went off on that tangent. (laughs) But I suppose I felt I had to slip that in there. Just to get people to think about things. So, anyways, point I'm making is I'm going back to the Seagal Van Dam feud. Is these folks on the internet that say all kinds of nasty stuff about each other. Again, folks, I concentrate on the grammar. I may may I may make some cheeky remarks regarding funny things, things that I find funny that other folks say. But I concentrate primarily on the grammar. And some folks take that as a personal attack. They think that I'm attacking their character when I show that they don't know jack shit about correct sentence structure. So therefore, they get their panties all in a bunch. They get upset. And then they start name calling and swearing and cussing and cursing. and You know, all kinds of wonderful things. Which is the knee-jerk reaction, pretty much my experience, the knee-jerk reaction of someone that knows they don't have a leg to stand on and they don't know what else to do about it. So they just lash out like a little baby. Rather than take accountability for what it is they're doing. Um, As I'm sure you know, if you're a follower of this channel, a subscriber, you will know that I have stopped and corrected myself publicly numerous times. I have no problem with that, folks. I cultivate humility. I'm not scared to admit when I'm wrong, when someone can show me the error and show me the damage and then show me or help me to correct it. No problem at all doing that. Obviously, those folks that I mentioned do have some sort of problem with that. Of course, they probably want to save face because they want to be looked at as some sort of authority. So if they admit, perhaps, that they made a mistake, and this is pure speculation, folks, if they admit that they made a mistake, now suddenly they, maybe they feel less 
in other people's eyes. Like they're not the master that they said they were. I kind of look at it as, again, <laughs> to do the old martial arts analogy, that uh, you have a, a black belt in whatever, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay? So you have a fifth-degree black belt. And then you have a, uh, a prodigy come up through the ranks and they reach black belt. They're not a fifth degree black belt, but they're a black belt. Or they might even be a brown belt or a purple belt. And they roll with the fifth degree black belt and they go hard. And they get the upper hand a couple times. That does not mean that the fifth degree black belt did not earn that black belt. It does not mean that the fifth degree black belt lacks knowledge. It doesn't mean anything like that. It happens. No matter who you are, how tough you are, how much knowledge you think you have, there's always going to be someone out there who does it better, who who has more. Always. In martial arts, grammar, whatever field you want to put it in, whatever domain, there's always somebody out there who has your number. That's as true as the sun comes up in the morning and goes down at night. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I have not met someone who has my number in that capacity as far as the grammar goes. But I'm sure they're out there somewhere. And I'll bet dollars to donuts that it's probably going to be one of my students that do that. Because there are... A few that are showing some very, very good potential at uh, thinking about things outside of the way I think about things. Like they have fresh ideas, fresh concepts that they're bringing to the table. They're going beyond anything. They've begun to go beyond anything I've ever done. And it's pretty impressive and amazing to watch. So to bring it back... (laughs) Wow, I'm having trouble keeping on track here. Bring it back to the confrontation thing between uh, Van Damme and, and, and Seagal. The story goes that they met up at some party at Sylvester Stallone's mansion. And Van Damme challenged Seagal to a fight. Because Seagal had said, the only way he's going to fight is if it's to the death. So Van Damme was like, okay, to the death. Let's go. And Seagal turned him down not once but twice. Would not fight. So because he would not fight, the beef was squashed. Van Damme pretty much saw Seagal for who he was. And that was it. I think the same could be said for any of these folks out there who have imaginary, real or imaginary beefs with me which it's, it's got to be imaginary. I mean, it's probably real for them. But to me, it looks to be imaginary because I've done nothing to harm any of those folks other than point out that they're using incorrect grammar. That's it. And if any of them would ever consent to sit down in a geometric level playing field of contract and, uh, you know do a grammar challenge, have a discussion back and forth, I think things would turn out A-OK. Folks, keep in mind what I've said before. Uh, The majority of these folks are in the fiction. Because they're not using correct sentence structure and they're not conversant in it, they're using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. They are fiction systems, so they don't ever want to come up under the geometric level playing field of contract. They will never do that. Uh, With one exception. I will say one exception to that. Colon Jason hyphen Paul colon Grievous did come up under the geometric level playing field of contract and we did have a conversation. I have not spoken about that because a lot of things came up since then with myself and I just haven't had the now space to devote to something like that because, you know, everything is prioritized. And so I haven't really gotten back to that yet. 
but I do have the volition of communicating with him again sometime in the future in the confidential because I have more things to discuss with him before I come to my own personal conclusions about the guy and what he does. But I'll leave it at that. He is the only man to meet me on the geometric level playing field of contract and do a video communication. Nobody else did it. I offered, and I've said this in the past, Russell J. Gould. I have shared my personal contact information, personal, personal contact information with him, phone numbers and everything. And he did the same with me. And he said to me three times that he would contact me. Three times he said, I will contact you uh, at such and such time. And then he never would. And the third time he said, I will contact you within 72 hours. Never contacted me. So he violated that drogue, that timeline. And so I was like, that's it. I'm done with this. This is stupid to keep going on like this. And I didn't feel bad about it because I know lots of other folks that he did the same thing to. I know folks that he's taken gold and silver from and ghosted them and never performed on what he agreed to perform on. There were some folks overseas who were worried about the implementation of 5G in their country. I'm not going to say what country it was. And they contacted him. I was privy to this because, because I was, all right, on the periphery. And he said that he would write up documents for them. He wouldn't charge them anything. He'd write up documents and send it over. And then he would travel over there physically to go into their courtrooms and uh, confront the courts, but that they needed to pay for his security team to come over. They had to pay for rental cars, airfare, per diem, and, you know, normal stuff, which is nothing wrong with that. But he never showed up. He never sent the documents. Even after he was asked about it numerous times, hey, have you worked on that document yet? You said you, you were going to send us. Remember, you said you were going to send us a document. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'll get it. Never got it. And that's just one story out of many stories, folks. Uh, but we'll just leave it at that. If you're out there and you've dealt with him, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. You can find this, people talking about this on other channels, but it's basically died down. What I'm saying is, in relation to the Seagal Van Dam scenario, a lot of this stuff could easily be solved if people would just step up and talk about it. But no one really wants to do that, do they? No. They want to maintain their position. They don't want to humble themselves. They want to continue on with their little charade. And that's perfectly fine because it seems like everybody has retreated to their own specific corners of the quantum grammar domain. And everybody's happy, hopefully healthy. And hopefully you've enjoyed this and you'll see me in the next one. Thank you.